I've actually been working on a few little projects and check this out. It's very cool. So this is a Windows 10 tablet. Very cheap. It was just over $200 on Amazon. And I've just hooked it up to our wireless network and watch this. Radar. So now we actually have radar over the Wi-Fi network on a tablet with all the instrument data from the Meritron system including position and charts and we can retire our old laptop at the nav station now so I don't know I think it's pretty cool. actually a really cool and exciting day because we finally got our new instruments delivered. Ba -ba -bam. And the reason why we're doing this, our old B&G system, which is the original one on the boat, 15 years old, has been dying a slow death for the last couple years. So like the speed's been getting flaky, the depth sometimes does weird things, and just recently on the sail from Cape St. Francis, a bird actually flew away with the top of our wind vane, so we haven't had any wind direction or speed or anything. Um, so we looked at a couple of different instruments, with like the Raymarine stuff, we looked at the Furuno stuff, uh, we looked at the new B&G instruments, and then one of our friends actually on SV Totem told us about the Maritron system. And the reason why we chose this is because it actually uses a standard NMEA 2000 network bus. So uh, some of the other systems, they use kind of like a proprietary protocol, so you have to take their instruments and plug it into their bus, and then if you want to do anything else, you have to get adapters and stuff. But <clears throat> this one, standard NMEA 2000, which means that if we get like all of our little connectors, we just go with the standard blocks like this guy. And so any sensor that we want just plugs right into the bus. And we have one network backbone cable that runs throughout the boat. So like the current BNG system that we have, it has an individual wire coming from the, the Hydra 2000 unit down there. And then that, so you have multiple wires running for like, you know, the wind and the speed and depth and the, all the outside instruments. They each have uh, one cable run to them. And in this, we just have one single cable run through the boat. It terminates in these blocks, and then we can run it just individual little drop leads. The other thing we really liked about the Maritron stuff is their sensors are pretty cool. So this, for example, really got me excited because this is the new wind sensor we got. So it's a hydrosonic wind sensor. There's no moving parts, but it still gives us wind speed, wind direction. But this sensor also gives us humidity, temperature, and barometric pressure. Actually, I'm not sure if it gives us humidity, but I know it gives us barometric pressure and uh, temperature as well. So yeah, it should be cool. So let's see, it says, no moving parts, ultrasonic wind speed and direction sensor. Weather function include temperature, oh it does, temperature, humidity, pressure, accurate wind speed, and direction even when tilted. So it's going to be cool to not have any moving parts that birds can fly away with. <laughs> and the other thing that we really liked when we went and looked at these is their displays. Their MFD displays. They're totally configurable, so you can configure the pages to show whatever you want and they're super high resolution. So when me and Brady went and looked at this at the display stand, you could be like pretty far away from it and the display is quite high and colorful and good resolution. So we are psyched to get this installed and update the instruments on Delos because yeah, it's time. <laughs> so how old are the old instruments? The old instruments are 15 years old, so they are the actual, the original ones from the boat. And I do really like the style of like the analog gauges that we have right now. I think they're quite cool, but you know, we're 
we're gonna go with the, the digital MFDs with the new system and see how see how we like that. It should have some cool displays like an analog looking kind of wind direction angle and something that we can we can program in there. Cool. Um, the other thing that we're gonna try and do is we're not gonna replace our whole system at the same time. So you know on Delos we have our instruments wind speed, direction, speed through the water, um, depth, that sort of thing. But we also have an autopilot, which is uh, Raymarine. We have an AIS uh, and GPS. Uh, we have a separate radar system, which is Codan SciTech. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna just replace the instruments, and then we have this NMEA 2000 to the old standard convert. So this cable will just plug into one of our network ports like that. And then I can take this and we'll wire it up into all of our existing old system stuff. So we'll still be able to use like, you know, the autopilot and we'll still get the AIS and the GPS uh, into the system without having to replace everything because that would be super expensive and a lot more work. So you took out the old instruments um, look at that old let me see that beast yeah okay so what's the what's the deal with the so size? the dealio is that the back of this one as you can see is smaller than the marathon <laughs> but the display itself is actually bigger so we're gonna need to redo everything I can see you Mel does a really nice job though, like you take out one little thing like this and then all these pieces of the cabinetry just slide right out. And then you can put it down. And back here we have 15 years <laughs> of wiring and electronics all crammed in. So I think we're going to try and clean this up a little bit while we're at it. We've got the VHF radio. We've got the ever important boat stereo. This is the NMEA 0183 multiplexer. This is the old VHF. There's absolutely no reason for that to be there. It hasn't worked in eight years. So we're gonna pull that out of there. We're deep into the guts and so far I've managed to pull out, check out these wires. Just from that little area there, look at all this stuff I've pulled out and this is like just from one little cabinet so that's think, all just waste I think we're gonna have when we're done a big heap of wires is what I'm hoping because it's all gonna be replaced by like one so the plan right now is Karen got the instruments off and we have all the wire ends here and so what we need to do is do you see that there's a conduit right up here if you can see the conduits, which are very nice. And what we're going to do is put the new backbone cable onto the end of these old wires. And we're going to pull them through the conduits. Come this way, come this way. Into here. And there's the other end of the conduits. So when we pull those wires through there, we'll then run them down through the hole in the bulkhead and through here and then the backbone will terminate back here where, where the other control box was. Looking careful with that. I mean, there's like a 90 degree bend here and to get wires through here is real tough so it's easier just to take the panel off now. We can just push wires through here and pull all the old ones out. We've decided while we're in here we're going to rewire the solar system and make it a little bit more better. Mo' better. Mo' better. Hold it. This is the old wiring for the displays. Coming out. It's been in here for 16 years. The backbone coming through. What? Hold on. Okay. It has four drops. One for each of the MFDs, the yep. instruments. That's it. Oh, and they're color-coded. They're color-coded. Whoa! How easy is that? Might. 
this is the old line for the transducer for the speed and depth and we're pulling this one to pull the new line through that's going to connect and then it's going to also run up the mast for another connection to the top wind sensor you're a transducer <laughs> so this powers the backbone so this is what goes to 12 volts and this is what puts voltage and powers up the system and powers all the instruments and transducers and so this will go between our drop our backbone drop that goes forward and this side will go to the uh, multifunction displays outside and then this one will go to our little nifty uh, converter our 0183 to 2000 converter as far as I can understand and then, and then that's with that, and that will go to the autopilot. And yeah, exactly. And then that'll hook into like the rest of the the old system through our multiplexer. That's the one. And it wouldn't be working without beer. <laughs> <laughs> so the wires are actually really cool. They they've done a really good job at separating. So you take out the, the outer housing, and you have the the shielding wire, which is kind of a standalone wire in the middle. And then you have the two colors, so you have red, black, white, and blue on this side. Yeah, so they, they separate it really good for you. And then they have the connector, which is all color-coded. So, it's, I mean, it's, you can't really fuck it up too bad, I guess. Just put the right color on the right one. So, strip it back, get those out of the way. And it's really cool, it comes with like a waterproof adapter that slides on kind of like when you connect a water hose to a to a faucet so all this housing covers up all the strip wires and it locks on real good and then here is the oh just like nature male female so sweet so that end's gonna go to the the backbone by the nav station and then one end will go up the mast and one end will go to the depth sounder. That's what you get, man. Play, play, playing with uh, electrical wiring and hobby knives and drinking beer. <laughs> is it a good one? No. Uh, I think you'll live to cut yourself another day. Yes. I noticed the German guy taught me a trick the other day and he just wrapped duct tape around it. I mean, uh, electrical tape. Mm -hmm. morning oh good morning how does it feel day two of the project <laughs> me and Brady made massive progress last night we stayed up drinking beers and we ran all the wire like this one all the way forward and routed it down into the bilge and then Brady was fiddling around with one of our our T connectors that go on to the end of this and he turned it the wrong way and broke all the pins off so we have to buy a new one of those but uh, it's good, it's good. So I'm just finishing up, like, putting everything together. So this is the two ends of the backbone. And then they will go on to this guy, which is powers the backbone. So this will kind of go somewhere in here. And then each of these ends just goes on to this, like that. And then off of this drop will be the, the, 0183 to 2000 converter and then this is the NMEA multiplexer so this will then go into that and then we'll hook the autopilot and the AIS and GPS and all of our old instruments that we're keeping up to that and then this right here is a little wireless router that I bought and we'll also hook the wireless router into the RS-232 port on that and the cool thing about that is they sell a wireless adapter for the Meritron system, but it's like six or seven hundred dollars. It's pretty expensive And I bought that on Amazon for like 50 bucks, I think so and supposedly it should work so if I plug that in then that means we'll get All the instrument data wirelessly, so we'll be able to use like laptops Tablets pretty much everything all the instrument data will be on Wi-Fi Which should be pretty sweet so this is the end that goes at the top of the mast. So on the end of that will be a terminator. Yep, this termination resistor thingy. 
and then it goes into the wind sensor, which sits atop of this pole. Right, so this stuff goes in here like that, screws to the bottom. Yeah. Then I'll feed this down the mast to you, and yep. then you can put that end on it. Yeah. So there's like this little access port here where it'll come down, there's a conduit in the mast, and it'll come down the conduit and should end up right how, here. How big? Oh, it's quite big. Is it's there plenty of, plenty of room? Should be. So Brian, you will be up the mast just feeding that Yeah, I think we're going to feed it from the top because of that connector, you know, on this end. So I'll feed the end of the cable without the connector down here, and hopefully Brady should be able to see it here. Yeah, hopefully. Yep. Not enough because the old the old cord uh, that's running up the mast now that was for the old wind instrument there's not enough room in the conduit for it to go down so I'm gonna tie a, a fishing line to the bottom of that one and he'll pull it out and then we'll attach the new one and then pull that one back down through so the other line was too thick so luckily we have a spool of 250 pound test fishing line Try number three? Yeah, try number three. We found uh, another conduit on the starboard side of the mast. It turns out there's two. So the one on the port side has most of the wires in it, and we we're trying to put it down the same one as the last one because it goes below deck easier. Real smooth. Not yet, but. Whoa! That's the one. Got it! Woohoo! It's hot up there. Oh, I think I should have eaten before I went up. It's starting to feel real faint. But we got it. It's still such an awkward working position because you can never get high enough because of where the block is and it's at the very top of the mast. So you're always like working like this and it just kills your arms. Good thing you've been hitting the gym. Yeah, good thing. Okay, so we're just gonna pull this line, the last little bit, and um, we should have power to down here. Okay, I'm pulling! Yeah, pull it, Papa. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's going! There it is! Yeah. The through holes are made by the same manufacturer in the world, which is cool. So we shouldn't have to haul Delos out of the water. This is the one they sent, but we're going to leave the, the old one in the boat. And the cool thing about this one, it has a flap. So this is the part that goes outside. This is the part that goes inside. And see this flap right here? It's spring-loaded, so when you pull it out, it closes like that and should stem the water. Otherwise, you know, you get a, a gusher of water coming out. So we don't know if the old one has that or not. <laughs> but if it gushes too much... I mean, it's going to gush a lot. We'll just plug it back in. Are we ready? I guess. <laughs> I'm really nervous. You ready? Yep. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't so bad. Get <laughs> a little dingy pump. So, this little red box is an ActaSense converter and it converts the new instruments into the old standard, so it converts NMA 2000 into 0183. 
And that is wired into this multiplexer. So the multiplexer takes all the information from the old instruments, like the GPS and the AIS and the sailing instruments, and then it combines it together onto one single output. And this is our little wireless adapter. So that's going to take RS-232 data, uh, basically all the data from the multiplexer, and then broadcast it over wireless so that we can get it on like laptops and tablets and stuff. So all of these have like different baud rates and different configurations. And what I'm trying to do right now is get them all to talk to each other, make sure that they're all talking on the same baud rate. And What's all the a baud rate, Brian? A baud rate, like, ooh, good question. Okay. So like on old school computers, you had serial ports, those wires used to plug into the side and they go at rates of like 4,800 or 90, what is it, 9,600 or 38,400. And so the rates of information, so AIS has a lot of data going back and forth because there could be like a lot of ships and a lot of targets and it has GPS in it. So that rate that it works on is 38,400. So it's a lot of data. All the old instruments work on 4,800 because they're like old systems and they can't handle that much data. So the multiplexer takes in all the high speed data and it kind of buffers it and then combines it so that things like the VHF can understand it. Um, the new system works like even faster, so it's not a problem. So what I have here is I have the laptop hooked up to the output of the multiplexer and we can see the data coming in. So this is actually, let me make it real big. Uh, so this is the data that's being transmitted over the system. Uh, the ones that start with an exclamation are AIS targets. And the ones that start with a dollar sign, maybe I should pause it or something. Let me just unplug it real quick. Okay. So this is the raw data that's coming from the AIS and GPS unit. So this is a sentence telling it that, okay, this is an AIS identifier, and then this is the actual information encoded with a checksum at the end for whatever target that is. This one right here with the dollar sign GPRMC, that's an NMEA 0183 sentence for uh, GPS position with a checksum at the end. So this is coming in from the AIS and the GPS unit, which is good. But now what I need to do is get in all the information from like wind and speed and depth and water temperature and barometric pressure. Each one of those are going to have their own unique sentence identifier. So the converter should put them all together. And the idea is you get them all on one thing that I can plug into the, the wireless adapter and route to all the instrument displays. So this is the unit that I'm working on right now. So you can see how it has all these different inputs. NMEA 1, 2, 3, 4, and 4 is AIS at the higher bitrate. And what it does is it basically takes all the different sources of information and then it combines them into one source of information that you can then feed into like a computer or the instruments or VHF radio. And it also does the same thing at a different speed. So, you know, our VHF radio, it likes GPS position for position. If you'd hit the, the emergency button on it, it has a position that it can transmit. But it can understand this baud rate, 38,400. It only understands 4,800. But you can take all the important information and cross it over. So that's what I'm programming right now. So I'm soldering. Okay, so that's ground, that's transmit, and that's receive. According to the diagram. <laughs> Got it, Kaza? <Kessa? laughs> this one. Got it. RS-232. Transmit, receive, and ground. So I should be able to hook this up to the converter, and then I should be able to use this old school Windows XP machine to all talk right, to right. it via this cable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're here to help. <laughs> well, we're getting down there on the project. Everything's coming together. And this is our radar control box. 
It's from Koden SciTech, and the reason why we use this one is because of this on the back. So it's got an Ethernet port. So the whole purpose of this box is it connects to the radome up on the mizzen mast, and we've got power going in here, and then we actually just get radar data over Ethernet out of this. So now I can take this and I can plug it into like a hub or a wireless router or the back of our laptop and we get radar on the PC so we don't have to have a chart plotter, which is really cool. So I'm just getting it all installed up here. Got all the wires hooked up and turned it on and it's powering up. So next step is to hook it up to the PC and see if we're getting the radar out of it. How exciting is this? Are you ready? <laughs> I'm gonna flip it. I think so. Flip it good. There we go. You coming on? Yeah. Okay, good. It's a bit hard to see on the camera, but... Okay. There we go. One of them is a bit darker than the other. That's a little weird. Yeah, there we go. That must have been the one that I already set up. So now we have to configure. I wonder if we have to configure these, too. To be in like, yeah, they're all set in meters and stuff. The meters is good. No, I mean feet. Oh. So we have to figure out how to set the screens that we want. Set them up for wind or adapt the speed over ground. Put the hard parts done. Cool. Looking good. So at the Anchorage, I've actually been working on a few little projects and check this out. It's very cool. So this is a Windows 10 tablet very cheap it was just over two hundred dollars on Amazon and I've just hooked it up to our wireless network and watch this radar so now we actually have radar over the Wi-Fi network on a tablet with all the instrument data from the Maritron system including position and charts and we can retire our old laptop at the nav station now so I don't know I think it's pretty cool uh, we'll see how it works and let you guys know Karen I have a surprise for you look at that how cool is that oh that's awesome man that's radar <laughs> Wow, and it's over cool. Wi-Fi with all the instrument data. Pretty that's happy insane, right now. insane, Brian. How did you get that to work? I don't know, I read the manual. Nah. <laughs> hey brother. What's up, man? Take a look at this. Tell me what you think. Whoa! <laughs> Do you know what that is? Sweet, bro. You got it over Wi-Fi. Yeah. That's so, awesome, man. We've got... Everything so, we need on a tablet now. What did it you, you you hooked up the Ethernet into the Wi-Fi? I had to reconfigure the the Wi-Fi the, the Wi -Fi point to yeah. to bridge the data between the uh, com ports. The bridge rectifier. I had to bridge the data between the com ports and the Ethernet <laughs> adapter and the the Wi-Fi adapter. <laughs> My flux capacitor is broken. <laughs> No, it's cool, bro. That's great. Isn't that sweet? Yeah, now we can get rid of that fucking monitor. Yeah, and now any of our laptops yeah. can run radar and all the instrument data just from off Wi-Fi. So you could have this in your room if you want, like whatever, if you want. Not that you'd want to, but... I lay down there on watch now. <laughs> there you go, bro. <laughs> no, that's cool, man. Yeah, and it seems to good be working job. pretty... I haven't played with it a lot, but it seems to be working pretty good. Yep. This shows the boat over there. Yep. And it shows land. Yep. Nice one, bro. Sweet, huh? Well done. <laughs>